Today we will be presenting our mobile communication project and our topic is about telecommunication in Malaysia. My name is Siti Zafara and this is my partner Chungkit. Our content page will include introduction and future plans which will be done by me followed by technology roadmap and network operator which will be done by Siti. And in the end we will do our conclusion together. Malaysia's telecommunications network is more advanced than most Southeast Asia countries, with the exception of Singapore. In 2000, the percentage of people with telephone lines in Malaysia stood at 21%. That's twice of Thailand, six to eight times of Philippines and Indonesia. Malaysia had 4.7 million fixed line subscribers back then and 5.5 million cellular subscribers. Telecommunication services, however, are poor in rural areas compared to urban centers. Malaysia's telecommunication is mainly monopolized by a company called Telecom Malaysia. However, they have other com competitors which include Maxis, Cellcom, DG, and Time. But they still provide the best service among the other telecommunication companies. TMNet is Malaysia's largest ISP provider. At the end of 2001, the market share of Malaysia's mobile operators is Maxis with 28%, Cellcom with 26%, Telecom Malaysia with 18%, DG with 16%, and Time is to 12%. The target of telephone lines for the nation by the year 2020 is fixed at 50 telephones for every 100 persons, and half as much for rural areas. This target is to be achieved through an increase in basic facilities and improving existing telecommunication standards. The government will license more companies to supply certain infrastructures and services. Technologies will be improved such as voice, video, data, imaging services, fiber optic, microwave network and satellite systems. The government will also revise rates and tariffs from time to time so that the cost of the services is reasonable and on par with those charged by neighboring countries. Upgrading of rural tele telecommunication will also not be neglected. So for now, I'll be talking about the technology roadmap and then by the network operator later on. So the technology roadmap will be a timeline of 1870 to 1993. Start by 1870. They they have a first telegraph submarine cable which links Malaysia and Indonesia and that started by the 1870 of the telecommunication in Malaysia. 1876, telephone was invented by Alexander Graham Bell. Who is Alexander Graham Bell? He was an eminent Scottish born scientist, inventor, engineering and innovator who is credited with inventing the first practical telephone. In 1929, Royal Malaysian Police Radio links the island Pulau Ketam to Port Klang. Pulau Ketam is an island at the mouth of the Klang River, which is near Port Klang downstream from KL. 1931, the first commercial radio was broadcast from Bukit Petaling Radio Station. 1936, first overseas radio link was made from Kuala Lumpur to the rest of the world. 1985, cordless mobile phone was introduced. And last of the timeline, 1993, the world's fourth tallest telecommunication tower called Kuala Lumpur Tower was launched. So, for now I'll be talking about the network operator of Malaysia. I'll be calling it CDM. C stands for Cellcom, D, DG, M, Maxis. So, starting off with Cellcom, they have the oldest mobile telecommunication company in Malaysia. They claim to have the widest and most extensive coverage nationwide compared to the other cellular service in Malaysia. Cellcom also claims its dual band GSM. Coverage has reached over 99% of Malaysia populated area in 2006 and 100% through satellite coverage. Cellcom offer both 2.5G and 3G services of its prospects on 2006. In 2009, the 3G coverage covers most major towns where there is a telephone exchange.
On 5th July, the news article said that Malaysia Cellcom says that it has signed an agreement with LTX Communication to build, operate and manage shared infrastructure across the country. The intention of the deal is that Cellcom and LTX will pull their respective 2 times 10 MHz bandwidth of 2.6 GHz spectrum, while a further block of 2 times 20 MHz spectrum held by LTX may be made available to Cellcom. Network operator CDN. C, Cellcom, really done with it, and now with D, DG. DG became the first telecom in Malaysia to launch and operate a fully digital cellular network. They were the first to offer GPRS, which is a 2.5G. WAP services were offered by DG. On the 1st April of 2010, DG is the second operator in Malaysia to offer the iPhone. 2011, DG began upgrading its network of 5,000 network sites to LTE. This upgrade allowed expanding on its age and 3G service to 95.8% of Malaysians and having a greener and energy efficient environment. And today, DG operates a highly efficient network with the best performance in this country and this has always been the envy of other mobile operators. On 10 July 2012, the news article says that DG has launched a new over-the-counter remittance service that will enable Malaysians and migrants to send money to nine countries across Asia, such as Indonesia, Philippines, Nepal, and so on. The, these services is backed by the Maybank. CDM. Lastly, M. Maxis. Maxis on 1st January 2013, have launched Malaysia's first 4G LTE network. Their high-speed internet footprint is the largest in the country. The iPhone, BlackBerry and Samsung Galaxy were brought to Malaysia market by Maxis. International roaming, MMS, WAAP and residential fixed-line services were offered by Maxis as well. The popular prepaid brand Hotlink in Malaysia was introduced by Maxis and well-known artists such as Siti Nualiza and so on was signed as one of the spokespersons from Maxis. On 1st June 2009, the news article said that Malaysia mobile network operator Maxis has selected Netcracker technology to manage its network infrastructure and enhance overall operational efficiency. Netcracker solution will give us an opportunity to achieve our business goals through improved operations and innovation, the Chief Technology Officer of Maxis says. So, for now we will be talking about a CDM, the difference of strategy, new size scrabble and the size scrabble rate. For Cellcom, they build a profitable interest that maximize investor return as their strategy. And for DG, the strategy, firstly, identify challenges, opportunities in business. Step two, match unmet goals of customer. Step three, develop a vision of how online assets will fulfill those business and customer's needs. Step four, procreate and prioritize a set of online initiatives which can deliver on this vision. For Maxi strategy, focus on customer retention instead of maintaining its margin, might add pressure to its near-term financial performance. Next, we will go on to the new subscriber differences. As you can see, GG gained the most number of subscribers, while Maxis lose 1.2 million subscribers. And for subscriber rate, yet Maxis is the highest one, 38.1% compared to DG and Cellcom. After research, with the assistance from Open Signal Basic Static, Messis ranks the first for the average network speed, coverage maps, and the reliability. For Cellcom, they provide a customer with the best wireless coverage in Malaysia. 
Maxis and Cellcom outweigh Digi in terms of other services provided like Minutes, SMS and MMS. According to LippingPost.com, they recommended Cellcom as the fastest reliable 4G data service in town. In conclusion, Malaysia's telecommunication technology is improving better than most countries as they will continue to do so with their future developments planned nicely. The country's telecommunication is mainly monopolized by a co company called Telecom Malaysia as they provide better services than the other four competitors. However, in the future, more companies will be licensed to keep up the needs of the country's telecommunication industry. Okay. With the decline in Maxis, subscriber rate, the leading telecom company, may change in just within a year. Cellcom and DG are catching up and soon they may tie up with Maxis. And that's our end of our presentation. Thank you.